be a beautiful oh there we go got two massive ones each they're literally the size of my hand guys that's delicious right I've said it many times, I know I would change my ways, I know for sure When all the crows decide to meet They settle down beneath my feet I've got it right and I got it wrong but I learned my Hello everybody, how you doing? I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome back to my channel and to another What I Eat In A Day video. I really enjoy filming these and they seem to go down really well with you guys as well. Just getting a bit of an insight into what I eat in a regular day. I'd say today is like a day like any other to be honest. Woke up, had my workout, did my little bit of exercise for the day. Would highly recommend that. I know it's not really about what you eat. But I'm putting this in anyway. I try and exercise at least three times a week, if not more, and split that between cardio and weights. As the gyms are closed, I'm just really enjoying working out at home. So that's me. Also, do excuse the hair. Just got out of the shower, feeling fresh. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is what I ate in a day video. is going to be breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, drinks, everything in between. Usually when I wake up, I don't have coffee straight away. I just like to pour myself the biggest glass of water or just drink the water from the night before I've got on my bedside table. I just need instant hydration. I don't know why I just always wake up super dehydrated. So it's my first point of call. Um, a lot of people put lemon in their water. Yes, fully here for that as well. And then after my workout, it's usually time for some breakfast. Breakfast kind of splits between, we usually have either like granola, yogurt and fruit, and we'll have like toast, or we'll do bagels, poached eggs, that kind of thing. Today, today is a treat. We're gonna be having our bagels. We're going to be having our poached eggs and we're also going to do some avocado and I know a lot of you asked in a previous video how I poach eggs and make them good. So we're going to do a poached egg tutorial. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing for poached eggs is you're going to need quite a high sided large pan. We have four eggs so we do two eggs each. And I will start off with boiling water just because it helps speed up the process. So I put about that much boiling water in. And then I turn it on to like a medium heat, I would say. Not like a roaring boil, but it needs to come to a boil and then you drop the temperature down. And for my poached eggs, I use white wine vinegar. You can use any like acidic vinegar. Apple cider vinegar works really well. You just need a splash of this. It just helps with the protein of the egg white and makes them extra nice. <laughs> So I break my eggs into glass ramekins or something that you can basically lower the egg into the water with. And also, fridge cold eggs work better than room temperature eggs. I know a lot of people do keep their eggs in the fridge. I used to keep them out um, because they're stored out in the store. But yeah, I literally just lower it directly into the pan like this. And then pull away. And that is one poached egg in. So Zara has just mashed up some avocado. We had like an extra large avocado, so we just put a bit of salt and pepper in that, and usually a bit of lime would be really good as well. Or chili, you can put whatever you want in that, but I just like plain avo sometimes, I and mean, then we just pop that on top of the toasted bagels. So the poached eggs have had, I'd say about mm, like two and a half, three minutes. These are medium sized eggs, and what I do is use a slotted spoon and just pick them out of the pan and then just let them dry naturally. You can pop them on kitchen foil, um, kitchen foil, kitchen paper if you'd like to, to fully dry them out, but I don't really think that's necessary as long as the water's off. And um, we've got two more in there because I only wanted one egg. And um, yeah, they're literally ready to top onto our bagel now. And I literally just plonk them directly on like that. And then all I do to finish it off is just a little bit of salt on top of the eggs, grind a fresh black pepper. And then for an extra little bit of something, I just pop a couple of chili flakes on top of the eggs. It just gives it a really nice kick. And then to have with my breakfast, I'm just gonna have some of this um, apple and mango juice. This is from Lidl and it's absolutely delicious. It's so tasty, just a little bit. Okay, so if I've done my jump right, this should be a beautiful, oh, there we go. Nice runny yolk in the middle. Oh, it's a thing of joy. Super simple once you know how to do it and you'll get perfect porchies every single time. Right, I'm gonna dig in. And let it go for a little while. 
So I've all finished up breakfast and oh my god those eggs. Honestly, if you do try poached eggs, let me know how you get on or if you've got any tips for me that maybe I'm doing wrong, but I get pretty decent eggs every time. So that's it's like my routine and it works and they're so tasty. Oh, unreal. Um, anyway, I'm gonna have a coffee now because I love my coffee. I try and restrict myself to around one coffee, maybe two coffees a day max. Um, I get quite bad heart palpitations and sometimes I get a little bit of anxiety. So I try to avoid caffeine as much as possible and restrict the coffees I do have to a minimum. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna make myself a coffee. So I have this coffee machine. I have lots of different types of coffee to be fair. I have, um, I'll show you in here. So usually I either have like a filter coffee, which is like this, which I absolutely love. I usually have one of those kind of on the morning, but I'm gonna feel like I want an espresso today. So I'm gonna use my Sage Barista Express. You guys know I absolutely love this machine. I talk about it all the time. It is brilliant. Quite an expensive bit of kit, but once you have it, you will not turn back. So I'm gonna make myself a latte and I use whole bean coffee just because I absolutely love the taste of freshly ground coffee. It's nothing better and I don't have dairy, um, dairy milk, sorry. I just have oat milk and this is from Minor Figures. I picked this up in Little actually. I haven't tried it until recently and I love it. I usually have Oatly, but this is really tasty. So I'm gonna make myself a latte and get cracking with some emails. <laughs> So my latte art is by no means amazing, but I mean, it'll do, it'll do. So this is my oat milk latte, and I put a double shot in there, and that is gonna get me going for the day ahead. I cannot wait to enjoy this. One of the things I genuinely have loved about being at home more and working from home more is that I don't have to get lunches out, which is great. It means I can control what I'm eating and save a lot of money, and we usually do more for dinner the night prior so that we can actually have leftovers for lunch the next day. So that just works for us. So I'm gonna show you what we're having. It doesn't look the most appetizing, but trust me, it was so good. So this is a spinach and ricotta stuffed con Conchiglioni, I think that's how you say con conchiglioni, and it is giant shell stuffed pasta. We baked it in like a tomato and garlic sauce, um, and we just had some leftovers, so I'm just gonna pop this straight into the oven to warm through, and we're gonna have this with a little bit of side salad as a delicious leftover lunch. I will leave the recipe this down below. I kinda like tweaked it a little bit for our taste, but it honestly is so easy, complete vegetarian, and so delicious. So the conchiglioni has just warmed through and it looks delicious, literally. I wish you guys could smell how good this looks. It's like the garlic sauce is unreal. And I've just chopped up a simple side salad of some lettuce, uh, cucumber, red pepper, and tomato. And I did a bit of an olive oil and balsamic dressing with some salt and pepper. So we're gonna play it up. A little bit after lunch, the last clip you saw, I was devouring pasta. I'm now in the park. I'm with Ewan. Say hello. hello. <laughs> this is um, standard procedure. We're shooting in parks now, which is fantastic. Um, insert a little bit of food. I packed some fresh strawberries because these were for a prop. And I'm also having a delicious cafe latte iced coffee. This is the um, cappuccino flavor. So it's like chocolatey and it's, oh, they're so good. They're so tasty. Nice to have a little afternoon pick me up. Although, I think we're still gonna have a beer a bit later on. I think beer. I've got a banana in my bag if things get... Wavy. Yeah. <laughs> beer and a banana. That's all I can offer, I bananas and beer. That's perfect, that's all we need. And the sun's came out as well, which is lovely. And um, I'll catch you guys when we're having a beer. Probably gonna have a, definitely have a beer. Although I do have the car, so I might be maxed at one beer, which is still fine. And then um, we're gonna be making dinner later on and it's a good dinner, so I'm very excited. I'll show you when we're home. So as promised, a pint of Amstel. <laughs> I'm keeping it real. If this is what I'm having a day, is what I'm having a day. This is a birthday for later drink with you and it is, it is. This is definitely there's some goodness in a beer, I'm sure. We're just gonna stick to the one because I am driving, but um yeah, I just thought I'd include this because I am honest as hell. <laughs> okay, so it is dinner time now and we're about to make something I've never made before. 
I'm very much excited about this. It's a new cookbook. This came in some wildlife I got for my birthday. My mum got me it. It's called Bosch. It's by a guy it's called Bosch TV. He recommended them before if you're a regular viewer because they do veggie and vegan stuff. So I'm going to show you what we're going to make. So this is what we're making this evening. These are the samosas and they're filled with a burrito filling. So it's kind of like a fusion between Indian and Mexican. Um, this is the list of ingredients you're going to need. I'm not going to read them out so you can kind of just pause this video if you do want to make it. And I'll link the recipe down below if it's actually on the internet. But um, first we need to peel and chop some potatoes and boil them for the filling. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna get the rest of the ingredients out. We're also gonna have some pink lemonade while we're making dinner. This uh, is a French pink lemonade. It's absolutely delicious. I picked this up in the garden center. So um, we're gonna have some of this as a treat while I get cracking on with the burritos. When I was young, I thought control. Okay, so I didn't film this part just because it's pretty bog standard in a wok or you can do it in like a large frying pan. I've finally sliced one red onion and three cloves of garlic and I'm just simmering that down a little bit of olive oil. I did just turn it off because I was chopping some peppers. And over here we've got three Morris Piper potatoes that we've peeled and chopped into one centimeter cubes and these just need to come to the boil and then simmer for 10 minutes. And then into this pan I'm going to add two red peppers. The recipe says one but I can't find any black beans so it's basically just a burrito mix and I'm also going to add one red chili pepper. Okay, so now it's time to add some flavors. So we've got one tablespoon of ground coriander here, two teaspoons of sweet smoked paprika, and two teaspoons of, supposed to be cumin seeds, but I couldn't find cumin seeds anywhere, so we've just used ground cumin. And then I just need to add that into the pepper, onion, garlic, and chili mix, and give that a good stir to make sure it's all coated. And then we add one tablespoon of Tabasco, or any form of chili sauce you have. And then now into the pepper mix, we're gonna add the potatoes, which we've just drained, and then these need to be coated in like the spices until they start crisping up and go nice and crunchy on the corners. And then this is nearly our filling. Okay, so I've just had some basmati rice cooking on the side and it's for around 10 minutes. And then what you've got to do is just pour this into your potato and pepper mixture and just give that a good old stir. And then this is the base of your burrito filling and you just need to add some seasoning, so some salt, some pepper, coriander, lime and Tabasco and then you're ready to fill your parcels. Okay, so this is our filling and then now I say we need to add some flavour. So we've got 15 grams of roughly chopped coriander, we've got the juice of one lime and then I'm going to add some of this hot sauce. Stir all that together and then we're ready to fill our parcels with... The recipe um, is traditionally vegan, so you can use some vegan non-dairy cheese, or we've got some leftover Mexican spicy cheddar, so we're gonna do this just to use it up. But yeah, you can make this completely vegan, which is what this recipe actually is. Okay, so we're gonna try and make a flour tortilla samosa here. Um, so basically, the recipe says to put a spoonful of the mixture, basically you're supposed to do like rice, and cheese separately, but we've just kind of mixed it all together. So I'm gonna do like two scoops of filling, like that, don't wanna overfill these. And then with your hands, kind of like mold it into a triangle-like shape, similar to this piece of samosa, which is tortilla. So then it covers the top like that, and then you fold the edges in on itself with a little bit of water to stick it together, and that forms your tortilla. That's what I'm gonna do. Now, apparently the recipe says we make five, but if you guys can see how much filling we've got, we're gonna have a lot of tortilla samosas, so let's get cracking. Okay, so this is our samosas. They're not like traditional triangles, I think, because they're made with flour tortillas. It's kind of, it's more rustic, but we've got four. So there's two each, and then look how much filling there is left. I knew there'd be so much left, so we're gonna pop this in a Tupperware and have this with rice to have like a burrito or rice bowl tomorrow for lunch. Great recipe so far. I'm gonna quickly run to the shop to get some avocado because we used it all for breakfast, and I'll come back once these are baked. They need to bake for 25 minutes at 180 degrees fan, so they're gonna go in now. Perfect. Set a timer. I have precisely 25 minutes to get a Tesco and back. Let's go. So I'm just gonna make a quick guacamole. So I've got an avocado, got from Tesco, half a lime and some coriander. Gonna chop that up and mash it in a bowl with a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm not gonna do any chili because I feel like we've got plenty of chili going on. And this is all of the leftovers. So I'll pop that in a little ramekin. And this is what I was saying this morning about leftovers. And that's our lunch tomorrow. 
It's great. Okay, and these are the finished samosas. Look at them. I've just topped them off with a bit of fresh coriander, and we've got some salsa and some avocado guac. I've got two massive ones each. They're literally the size of my hand. Right, I'm gonna dig in. I'll show you inside, and then we are gonna tuck in. I'm so excited. Literally, I'll link this recipe down below if it is available. I think they've done a YouTube video on it as well. Probably more concise than I have. But dinner is served. Okay, so this is the samosa. I'm gonna cut into it now and dig in. But I've just got the salsa and guac on the side. My God, it's literally massive. I feel like you could probably eat it with your hands, but it's going to be fairly messy. And then this is the inside. Oh my god, that is literally stuffed to the brim. Right, we're going to go in for a little bit of salsa, guac. Guys, that's delicious, right? That is so good, wow. It's literally stuffed. And the fact that it's completely vegan if you did do dairy-free cheese. Yes, 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 love this. I think this might be a new favourite. Mmm, so good. I mean, as if today wasn't a treat already, I am now finishing off with one of these delicious goo cheesecakes. They're called Gazillion Air Cheesecakes, and good lord, they are 10 out of 10. Come on in. These are super good as well. They've had like a rebrand, so this is what they look like. And the glass jars are great. They come in glass jars, you can fully recycle them, and they are, oh, I'm gonna break in at once so you can see. Oh my lord, look at that. Oh, they're so good. They're like proper cheesecake mousses, I let me. Oh my god, yes, 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 yes. There is just something about having a little treat to finish your day. Mm. We've also started a new series on Amazon called Little Fires Everywhere, and it is really good so far. We're only on episode one, but thoroughly enjoying it. Just thought I'd add that in as a recommendation. Okay, so that is everything. I'm gonna wrap up this vlog here. Um, I hope you have enjoyed having a bit of an insight into what I eat. Typical on a day to day, like I say, it kind of changes roughly depending on what we have for dinner, lunch, that kind of vibe. But if you've enjoyed this, what I eat in a day, and you've kind of got a little bit of inspiration, then um, let me know. And also let me know, like, if you wanna see more of these videos, or if there's similar type of videos, then just um, leave me a comment down below. But thank you so much for watching, as always. Don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up. And if you haven't clicked subscribe, you can click that down below. It helps me out a ton. But yeah, thank you so much, and I'll catch you all very soon. Bye for now.